J.D. Vance grew up in Southwest Ohio. Surrounded by poverty and addiction, he yearned for more. He enlisted in the Marines after graduating from high school and served in Iraq before returning home to pursue degrees at Ohio State and Yale Law School, where he met his future wife, Usha. They married in 2014 and have three young kids. Vance first came onto the national scene as an author with his 2016 best-selling book, Hillbilly Elegy, a memoir of a family and culture in crisis, highlighting his upbringing in Southwest Ohio and his journey to success. Experiences he took to voters in 2021 when he launched his first bid for public office, seeking to fill the seat of retiring U.S. Senator Rob Portman. Well, so we got to send somebody to the Senate who's not responsive to Democrat or Republican elites, actually serves the people. He faced a crowded field of Republican hopefuls, all essentially vying for the endorsement and a former President Donald Trump. Vance, though, had a huge hurdle to overcome. His past comments critical of Trump. He was the subject of ads looking to turn Trump voters against him. I'm a never Trump guy. I never liked him. Vance explaining his comments to me in 2022 as evolution. I was wrong, right? I mean, I think it's pretty simple that when the facts change in this country, you ought to change your mind. And Trump was, I think, a very good president uh, for the people of Ohio. He was a very good president for the country. And I think it's just, you know, you gotta be honest with people. At the end of the day, I can't hide from the fact that I criticized him six years ago. Also not gonna hide from the fact that I think he was a great president. I've been supporting him for the past several years. With the help of Donald Trump Jr., Vance was able to make the case to the former president who endorsed him just ahead of the Ohio Republican primary. We have to pick somebody that can win. And this guy is, he's tough, he's smart. It was a win that his back he needed. Trump's endorsement propelling Vance from the middle of the pack to a clear win for the GOP nomination. They wanted to write a story that this campaign would be the death of Donald Trump's America First agenda. Ladies and gentlemen, it ain't the death of the America First agenda. He would go on to defeat Democrat Tim Ryan in November of 2022 and be sworn in January 3rd of 2023. He took many staunch conservative stands, but he also was very open to working with the other side of the aisle, introducing bills with Democrats like Mark Kelly, Elizabeth Warren, and more than a few with Sherrod Brown. If you're not careful, people are gonna think you went to Washington to get things done. Well, I think I think you have to go to Washington to get things done. I mean, I, I didn't. I, this is not a high-priced debating society, John. To me, I didn't want to get here and sit on my hands and and go on TV and yell at people. I wanted to actually get things done. The Senate was a springboard of exposure to a national audience, as I told him in his first interview after he won the seat in 2022. It would be when this stage was set in the primary, Tim Ryan versus J.D. Vance. I said to myself and others that. Whoever wins this race will immediately be thrust into the national conversation of their party. We're going to have a presidential election coming up in less than two years. Would you be open to being part of your party's ticket? <laughs> uh, uh, you're the first person who's asked me that, and certainly not. I think my wife would kill me um, and probably probably a few other people as well. Still, as Vance's stock continued to rise, his thoughts once again evolved. And as his name rose among the short list of vice presidential hopefuls this year, his answer changed. Have sure. you had that conversation with the former president? And if so, would you be interested in it? Yeah, so so I would be interested in it, John, because I think that we have to help elect President Trump. I think he's the best person for the job. A message he will now be taking to voters across the country. John Kasich, News 5.